And we're happy to uh, continue our Hogs and Horns coverage here. And uh, we bring you Jason Allen, of course, a former Arkansas quarterback, with us here on Ruskin and Zach. Jason, good afternoon. How you doing, guys? We're doing good. Appreciate you stopping by. Yes, Zach? No, I'm just, I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm going to follow you. I thought you had something no, to not, say not, there. No, no, nothing yet. That's all right. So, uh, <laughs> what, so t- take us back to uh, that uh, War Memorial Stadium in 1991. It just the video looks insane. Being on the field in the middle of all that had to be uh, on another level. It, it was. I mean, of course, the weather was was picturesque. The the energy in the stadium was was just the players we fed off of it. Uh, you know, for us, we were coming off. Uh, not a great year in 1990. I actually redshirted in 90. Uh, it was Quinn, Quinn Grovey's senior year. Jack Crow's second year was 91, so we were looking for, you know, a signature win to change the the trajectory or the momentum of the program. And obviously, it didn't matter how we did it because it wasn't pretty, but it was one point. That was enough. <laughs> What's it like? I mean, when, um, you know, you you play on Saturday, you turn around Sunday morning, you're, you're, you're in the facility and it's Texas week. I mean, what are these guys going through? What did you go through when all of a sudden it's, you know, it's hook em week. So, so I learned a lot. So I, I'm, for those who don't remember or, you know, would like to know I'm, I'm originally, I grew up in Oklahoma. So I, I grew up with a hatred for Texas. Anyway, it goes, it goes deep and it's emotional. It's just a different red for me. You know, when I grew up, Obviously, I'm an Arkansas fan now, but so you know about Texas and what that means and the history and the emotion, you know, your parents talk about it, your friends. I mean, it's just, it's everywhere, right? So when I came to Arkansas, I had a lot to learn. I said, not a lot to learn, just different history. And so everything changes from just how you just, you know, body language and, and, and intensity and, and just. It's Texas week. It's Texas week. And it starts the day, the day after that last game you finished. And it's just, everything's different. And so it's just, everything's like, like Red Bull every day from the Sunday meetings to Monday, Tuesday. So all you're hyped up. And, and man, when we walked out just for warm ups, you could feel the electricity was going to be at an all time high at War Memorial. And when it's packed, War Memorial is as loud as any, any place. Jason Allen is our guest here on Ruskin and Zach. Uh, and it's uh, you, you said something a moment ago about uh, changing the trajectory. And here, 30 years later, almost uh, to the day, Arkansas is in a uh, similar situation where a win Saturday really uh, catapults this program in a, in, a, in a different direction. There's no doubt. And this is a great, great opportunity. Uh, you know, for me it was, too. Was timing is, is a lot of things in life. And this is certainly a time for – Coach Pittman, who certainly knows this this history and what it would mean for us this year, um, and you you could see it, you know, just with fans and you know pe- people in the media, you, you guys. I mean, it's it's fun, it's exciting, um, it's electric, and it's something that rallies people. And te- Texas has a has a way of doing that for the, for the Arkansas nation. Um, so it was. I remember after the game, you know, just kind of realizing what had happened. I mean, we went back out on the field to celebrate. That was something I'll never forget. Uh, I even talked to my brother about it this week. He was, a, he was nine years old, maybe. And he ran onto the field. He found me. I threw him on my shoulders after the game. And we were celebrating there at War Memorial. And lo and behold, the next day he's on the front page of the, of the newspaper. He's, he's famous. <laughs> so, but, uh, but it does. It certainly is a change. You, you, you talk about it when, you know, if you can, if they can win, it just sticks with you. And I remember my my dad, who who raised me to be an OU fan, but obviously he, we we changed to Arkansas fans. He uh, he said, "Son, you know your your life's going to be different," <laughs> and and it's because Texas it just means so much. It's a marker, it's a marker of memory for a lot of people, and uh, it was a certain certainly a day I like to remember and talk about. Your name, I mean, Arkansas has struggled a little bit. I mean, Texas has dominated the series, but I mean, your name's on a very short list of quarterbacks that have wins. And when when we talk about you, I mean, I think it gets kind of lost because of all the SEC that came right after. I mean, you were the last quarterback to beat Texas as a member of the SWC. 
Yeah, it's 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 one of the good memories, right? I mean, I'm I'm honest about my playing career is an honor to play at Arkansas. There's no doubt, and that was a highlight. Uh, I think the next year, uh, the, the highlight was leading the first SEC win ever in school history, the first time we played, but it came off the, <laughs> the a bad loss to open the season against Citadel. Um, so there's highs and lows, right? But tech, the, the win over Texas is, is a marker, there's no doubt. And for me, being from Oklahoma, it was extra special. Um, and it was, it was a highlight of that year. I mean, we actually went to a bowl game that year. Um, but I, I, I kind of, a few, few games later after that, actually it was the, uh, I think it was we had a week off. We got in the mm-hmm. top 25. Yeah, you're, t- you're 25th week. in the country. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Baylor had been as high as number eight. They were a good team. I think they were number 15 at the time, but. For those who remember that game, it was very, very cold. But anyway, I suffered a knee injury, and so that was, a again, go back to highs and lows. So I like to talk about the Texas game. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're talking with Jason Allen here on Ruskin and Zach. I, we, I, we were both uh, separately and then together. We were watching some of the clips today. And after the fourth down stop by the defense, Jack Crow has uh, his hand on your shoulder, and he's talking to you. Do you remember what he was telling you right then? Don't fumble the snap. Okay. <laughs> Good advice. Don't fumble. The snap. So it's like, okay, that's a negative thought. But Mark Henry, Mark Henry, uh, the dad of Hunter and and the other Henry boys, were was my center. And and Mark, he was way taller than me. So his when I would walk up, I had to really practice how to take a snap from a six five guy that that actually was was leaning forward. So. So getting a snap in that offense was was the first step, and certainly the victory formation. We didn't want to screw that up because we had, you know, all we had to do was ice the game, right? And so for those that don't remember that, this one, we went. I had this framed. We went for it on fourth and one at our own twenty. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so we were we were at our own twenty. We were that confident. And I went right behind Big Mark Henry, and I was going to get that first down no matter what. I I, I could do a few things well. Quarterback sneak was one of the best things I could do. <laughs> I, I would imagine weeks like this. I mean, like I I text you. I think last Saturday I'm like, hey, happy fourteen thirteen week. I'm, I'm a, I would imagine that uh, that your teammates and, and guys that you went to school with. I mean, you all sort of relive it every time. You know, we don't do it every year anymore. But when Texas pops up on the schedule. You guys have you know a little little remembering. Absolutely, I mean it's it's a again it's it's just a special time. It brings it's a bond too, and and um, you know like you said, there's only certain days you remember uh, about you know games like the Texas game, and because you do it together, and I'm certain the the, the, the Razorbacks, even though they're not. You know, in the conference, with they, they know they know what's at stake. They see the excitement. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, quickly a story. When I was a kid, this is a funny, quick story that my dad would take me to these OE Texas games. And it was 1984. We were staying in a hotel there before the game. It was the Summit Hotel on 635. Mm-hmm. For those that know the area in Dallas, I had my OU jersey on. I was 12 years old, and I get on the elevator to go probably go get some breakfast and the elevator stops and three big guys get on the elevator, three of them. And I noticed they had tape on their legs and lo and behold, I didn't realize this, but they had Texas football on their shirts. And so the team was staying at at the hotel, the Texas team. And so they looked at each other. They, they kind of snickered back and forth. And then they looked down at me at the same time. And they, the biggest guy goes, let's burn him. <laughs> and so then they looked at me and they laughed and said, hey, have, have fun today. And they got off. So for me, you know, when I looked down the line of scrimmage that day in 1991, all I could think about was that, that Texas Longhorn guy who said, let's burn him. I had emotional <laughs> scarring from – uh, from that experience, but again, there's no doubt. You know, I saw some former players at at uh, the game this past weekend, and it's just a special memory to have and uh, be able to talk about because Texas has got such a big tradition and 
history and and man, I'm hoping for a another another great day this Saturday. Well, and and Jason, it, it kind of um it, it rekindles this for uh, a lot of people, and it's a series that we don't know what the schedule is going to be, but it, it seems like they're going to be they're going to be in the same league, and they could be playing each other every year once again in the uh, in the not too distant future. Absolutely, I think it again for for Arkansas fans. I think it's a positive, and and it's something that. Again, it unites and brings us together emotionally as we've looked to 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 have that rival, you know, in this in this new era. Um, nothing brings it up like the Texas uh, the Texas series and the Texas matchup. So, you know, I, I think it's a good thing, and and I think we're going to be successful this weekend. There was a lot of talk last weekend about how nervous KJ looked in the first quarter. I mean, you you've made your first start at Razorback Stadium. I mean, when you run through that, day, can you even feel the ground as you're running? I mean, how long does it take a guy to sort of settle in? It takes time. Now he's had he's had some experience, um, but I think as time goes, you've heard you've heard uh, people say the game will slow down. I think you know he looks he looks comfortable. I think he knows knows what he's he's doing, but it just takes experience and. You know, I, I think it just that's a, you can't replace it, and and so people are gonna have to be patient. What I liked about KJ's performance is, you know, he he stayed with it, and he he didn't get rattled, um, and 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 it looked like he was making progress through the second half last week. Um, but you know, there's a lot going through a quarterback's mind, and it's it's a lot in a short amount of time in milliseconds, and. He's just going to get more and more confident as the year goes on, and uh, you know I look for him to continue to progress. I know that um, you know we, your son Grant is now the quarterback down at Watchdog. You talk about you know going to games with your dad, and and what's it like now? You know you you were a quarterback at the college level. Now you're watching Grant in the stands, and I know you 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 sit in the corner. You don't say much, but I mean your heart's got to be going a thousand miles an hour now. That I mean the roles have sort of revert. You know, they've all sort of changed for you now that you're the dad in the stands. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've had to work at it. I actually think it's easier to be on the field than in the stands. Um, I know I talked to my wife about it, and it's it's for those that have kids playing, especially a quarterback. You know, you it's it's just not the same because when you're on the field, you're distracted, right? And you're you're in the moment. You've got so much to think about. You almost zone out everything else. And so I, I just be honest, it's hard. It's really hard. So. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's fun and it's exciting because you you want the best for for your kids. And and I'll tell you this, my you know, when I was a quarterback and at Arkansas, there were people that they didn't hide their feelings. They and my parents had to deal with the same thing. Um, and so it's a it's uh, you, you can't have uh, soft skin or thin skin. You got to be thick skin. Yeah, and you still let them know you're the guy, right? I mean, you got the dub over Texas, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. He's just a lot faster. I, I just right. have to admit it. He's faster. <laughs> Jason Allen, former Razorback quarterback with us here on Ruskin and Zach. Uh, Jason, thanks so much for uh, taking time for us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Go right. Hogs. Jason Allen with us here on Ruskin and Zach. So I was looking at the series history during that, Zach. Mm-hmm. And if you, uh, if you like num- numerology, let me try this on for you. The only times Arkansas has beaten... Texas and Fayetteville. It's happened three times ever. First time was in 1951. Then 1965. Then 1981. This happens to be 2021. Wow. And we were talking to Jason Allen, who beat them in 1991. Okay. So it's uh, the ones are aligning here. Where uh, it's going to be a Gimme the Hogs Chuck Saturday, it seems like. You know what? Say that again, because people may have tuned you out there in the beginning. So Arkansas has beaten... Texas and Fayetteville three times. Okay. Remember, a lot of times, they've only played 17 times in Fayetteville. They played in Little Rock, uh, different places. First time was 1951. 1965, after the iconic 1964 game with the Hatfield uh, punt return down in Austin. 65, they beat them here. Right. 1981, that's 42 to 11 when the goalpost came down. And then we were talking to Jason Allen, who beat them in 1991. In the final SWC matchup between the two, and this happens to be 2021. So, huh. you see, do you pick up what I'm putting down here? Huh. 
Huh. I don't know if you play the numbers, but these may be numbers this you want to play. Might be a chance. Yeah. Give me the hogs, Chuck. That's right. Okay. Horns down and all that the other parts. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> huh. It's that time of the year again, and all eyes are now turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron to start the football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all of the pro and college football action this season. Get all of the updated odds, props, and contests, including the online's biggest half million dollar NFL mega contest, the world's largest 200,000 NFL survivor contest, open now at Bet Online. Here's what you have to do head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 100% welcome bonus. Take advantage of their opening day super promo. Make a bet on the Thursday, September 9th season opener between the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your wager is going to be refunded for up to $25 for new customers only when signing up and using the promo code NFL100. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, you're online sportsbook experts.